I think we are live. Oh, hello. Hi, Kate. Hello. Hi. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to our digital fashion workshop. As we settle in, please introduce yourselves in the chat. Let us know where in the world you are and why you love digital fashion. I'm Anna Tarian. I'm co-hosting with Kay. We're both community managers at The Fabricant. Check out thefabricant.com for latest news, collabs, and drops. Our latest is with Tommy Hilfiger, which is super exciting and fun. So today we have some great guests from the Lovecraft community. Other than learning so much through uh, the Fabricant about digital fashion, I have learned so much through Lovecraft and being part of their community. Uh, they are responsible for my AI fashion journey and addiction. Um, we're joined by Lucas and Sarah. Lucas Guzman blew me away a couple years ago when I saw his AR work um, on Twitter and his uh, digital fashion work. And Sarah was actually here a few weeks ago with Gianni with her project with Cypher Loom. So check out that session on our YouTube channel. If it's not up yet, it will be up soon. They are going to be our guides. I'll have them introduce themselves in a bit and share a little bit about Lovecraft before they get started. What they're going to show us today is a workflow that all digital fashion designers want to know which is how to create a 3D garment, add animated fabric to it, and create an AR filter from it. The session is being recorded, so things may go a bit fast, but you're going to be able to rewatch it, pause it, and uh, follow along. Um, at the end, we're going to share a QR code that will lead you to a Notion page with instructions for you to follow. Uh, feel free to post questions or comments in the chat. We're streaming this on LinkedIn and on YouTube. Okay, it will be looking out for questions and depending on how it goes, may chime in during or after uh, the session. So with that, so happy you guys are here. Thank you so much for joining us. And Lucas and Alpha, please introduce yourselves, share a little bit about Lovecraft and take it away. Hello. Hi, Can you hi. hear me correctly? Perfect. Yes. Nice. Hi. Hi, everyone. Um, so I guess I can start. My name is Lucas Guzman. I'm a, I specialize in 3D art and real-time experiences with uh, different engines like uh, virtual reality, augmented reality, and I'm working a lot in the metaverse, creating avatars and um, also working quite a bit on um, uh, uh, digital fashion as well. So um, I am one of the co-founders of Lovecraft. And yeah, well, I'm going to talk about that a little bit later. But now and this is Sara. Hi, hello, everyone. So nice to be here and uh, good to have you here. So I'm an XR developer and artist. I've been working at Spooky for the last two years. And since the end of uh, March, I, I've been uh, freelancing. So um, yeah, and I, I really like to um, get on with uh, new technology. So I, I really love to experiment. And um, yeah, I'm happy to be here. Super nice. So um... Anatari, anything else or shall we just get started? We're going to wait for more people or what do you recommend? Oh, you're muted. Sorry, I think we can get started. Uh, yeah, uh, since it's recorded, you know, the, those of them that will be joining later can just rewatch. Uh, so you're able to share your screen and... Perfect. I'm, I'm, I'm sharing now. Okay, so... All right, here we go. Let's. Uh, this is the Notion page that I'm going to be sharing with you guys later. Uh, the link will be there at the end. But for now, um, this is where we more or less what we will be creating is a little preview. And as you can see on this Notion page, which will be, remain public, you'll be able to download the Lens project, the Blender file, uh, and the, it, the, the model itself if you want to try it out, and also 
some extra resources like this Lens Studio Body Mesh try on model. And all of this will make sense in a second. So also here are all the steps uh, more or less defined, but this is more like a step-by-step -step, uh, little help in next to what I'm going to be showing you now on uh, in Blender and then after in, in the studio. So it's kind of like a mix between what you're seeing now in this recorded video and what's in Notion. But let's dive right in. Uh, first of all, uh, what to explain what we're going to be making is this kind of poncho, which first of all has to be modeling 3D in Blender. I'm using Blender only because I think that uh, it, it's a good free tool that we all have access to, but you could also build this 3D model in Marvel's Designer and then export it to Lens Studio. It will have different, uh, um, different um, you will have to have different things in mind while you're designing it, but uh, any 3D modeling software tool, it, it's good for this. But uh, we're gonna go quickly through all the little things that you need to have in mind. So first of all, this is the model that I showed at the beginning of uh, called the, the body mesh try on for Lens Studio. This is the body um, tool that you're going to be using uh, like here. So as you can see in the viewport on Lens Studio, I already have this mesh. And ideally, we want to make sure that our poncho is built around this uh, this mannequin. So yeah, so to get started, I'm gonna start modeling this poncho. Uh, first of all, I need a, a very basic plane. And once I, so I, I have this very simple uh, plane that I created earlier. Uh, basically, I'm, I'm not gonna go through each one of the, 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 the shortcuts, but because well, I'll try to make it as quick as possible, but not. Uh, I don't. I don't want to dive into way too much detail because, yeah, it, it's basically a, a poncho that you can do, uh, do by creating some, uh, in this case, subdivisions and then upsetting the vertices. Uh, I'm getting a bit of echo there. Um, yeah. So, the, um, yeah. What was I saying? Oh, yeah. The plane that I created, first of all, I want to create this poncho, but uh, as you can see, what we're going to be doing is then later simulating this on top of the mesh so that that can be exported. I have already some of the steps. By the way, this is the Blender file that I'm going to be sharing with you guys. Uh, you can see all this later on. This is the poncho. Uh, I made it much smaller now because, yeah, I realized that this is far too big. It will end up being more like a big a blanket. Once I create the, the sub, I add even more subdivisions just to start getting the shape. And what I can do later is just add a few more here. And then, oh, well, let me show you the, so we can see all the, uh, one second, the wireframe of the polygons that I'm adding. And a good thing that we can do to add more subdivisions is add some more subdivisions so that you can get more and more polygons. All these polygons that I'm adding, by the way, it's because this is what we need in order to simulate the cloth bouncing against the body mesh. So the body mesh will act as the collider that uh, you will be moving in AR. And then this poncho, the vertices, will be the ones bouncing again. So if we have a mesh that is far too uh, low poly, let's say, then the mesh will be more easily deform and just fly around and move in odd ways. But if you end up having one that has way too many uh, subdivisions like this, then you will see that your your PC and your phone will um, will lag a lot because then each one of these vertices needs to be calculated and, and move around. So uh, yeah, so uh, Natalia, I hope like if you have any questions or if I'm going too fast or too slow, please do let me know. But um, uh, I wanted to show, okay. So then once I have this, uh, this little guy that I, I'm going to reset this one back to the beginning. So once I have it, once you have this, uh, this whole guy in, um, one second, let me go back a step. Yeah, there you go. So this is how much of the polygons I have right now. 
this is the, the modeling that, that I end up uh, doing. Now we can have a, we can add going to the physics tab and then add a cloth modifier. And in order for the cloth to bounce against this guy that we have in, against the body, then what I need to do is same. I also go to the uh, physics properties and then add a collision modifier. So this will make sure that when I press uh, spacebar, the it will basically work like you would expect in Marvelous Designer. It just falls down and bounces against the cloth, the body. Now, like I said, there's quite a few steps in between this, but just for the sake of speed, I'm going as fast as possible, just showing you all the, the finished step. But it has happened to me that I added way too many polygons, so it was really small. Or in some cases, I added way too few. Uh, also happened that what I, what I tried to make sure here that's happening is that all of this space between vertices is as similar as possible so that this kind of thing happens in like this kind of like square spaces are as uh, balanced or as the distance is correct. So that there are not too many polygons in the neck and not too few polygons in the far distance on the edges. Okay, so once that is done and I like what it's standing, this, then I can go to the modifiers tab and I can tell that, okay, this is what I want to apply. So that now, as I move the timeline, it's just frozen. This is now the position of the vertices. I have baked the position of the vertices. And this is basically what we're going to export. But the next thing I need to make sure that I have is that we need to do some of this, some vertex painting. This will be, sorry. Uh, well, in order to access this, I just grab this one, uh, the object, and I do Control Tab, and then I go to wait uh, Vertex Painting. Originally, this will show up like uh, this one, Control Tab, Vertex Paint, and now it's uh, all white. Uh, I can paint it. In my case, I want to do it. No, black. Let's do black. Because the reason I'm doing this is because the the, um, the black uh, means that, sorry, the reason I'm doing the, the vertex painting is because I, this is how we tell Lens Studio that this part around here is what I want to be uh, attached to the neck. So the way that's just the way that uh, Lens Studio works. That if, uh, if I just paint the, the vertex, it's which is not it has nothing to do with the the color of the of the mesh that will we will define later with a shader this is only to define to tell in the back end uh, uh what parts of the the mesh needs to be attached to the neck so once i do that i go back with control tab to object mode and i basically almost i can almost export this but there are quite a few technicalities to, to look at first. You will see them here in the Notion page. But uh, one thing that we have noticed is that, for example, this mesh has the pivot, the start has to be at the zero position. And the same happens with this big mesh. I have to, uh, right now, because this is where the plane started, it has the pivot here. So in order to have it at the zero position, I go to Object, Apply, All Transforms. So that's one thing. And then another funny thing that happens when you export, and this is a bonus tip for uh, to save you a lot of time and a lot of headaches, is that when you export from Blender, uh, the, the, the axis of Blender and Lens Studio are different. One uses the X axis, the other one uses the Y axis. So what you need to do is to rotate it 90 degrees, and then the scale is also off. So you need to make this guy 100 times larger. So you end up with this massive poncho with the correct uh, placement in the that has the shape of that mannequin that you saw, and it also has the vertex paint. And finally, this all has to be zero zero zero, and then scale has to be one. So in order to do that, I can go again to apply all transforms. That's in itself the whole thing that we need to do, and this is what I can now already export for Sara to go and do her part. So I just go to File uh, with this one selected, right? Uh, file, Export, 
LPX, and then I can do select objects and boom. Uh, you can also disable here bake animation because we're not going to need animation. So that's about it. Now I can give it to Sarah to continue with that. Quick question, yeah. sorry, before you go, yes. Sarah. There's a question in the um, comments. Do yes. this in Blender and not in Marvelous or Chloe? Um, I'm doing it in Blender because it's a free app. And <clears throat> I know for a fact that for something like this, you will make it in, in Marvelous. Most people will make it in Marvelous, but Marvelous is a paid tool. And I just wanted to show that for something as simple as this, which is just simulating something that just falls around the mannequin, it's just enough. And another thing about Marvelous is that more often than not, you will end up with a, a, a super high high uh, poly model. So you have to sure. bring down a lot of the, the poly count on the, on the mesh and then export that to Lens Studio. But you will find other little issues here and there, which is that thing where I mentioned about rotating, scaling. So uh, more often than not, I need to export from Narvalos Designer, what I did, then put it in Blender, clean it up a bit, export again with these settings, and then it works correctly in Lens Studio. So I'm basically showing you the inner step between Marvelous and Blender, but anybody that understands Marvelous Designer will know that this is also uh, uh, I think that, that that's doable, right? Like just make something fall on a mannequin. Awesome. Thank you so much. Nice. Cool. Okay. So I will share my screen. Let's see. Okay. So then uh, we head over to Lens Studio. And actually, Lens Studio is um, also free to download from the web. So if you yeah want to follow along, you can just grab it. And also, if you have downloaded the files, you could easily um, maybe just try to follow along. So um, first of all, we would start to um, open um, one of the uh, templates that come with Lens Studio. And inside, there are a lot of different templates that you can just uh, start playing with. And there, there are, I think, in total, three different templates that would um, um, help you setting up your digital fashion. Uh, and uh, the one that we used is the uh, try-on template. And um, actually, inside of these templates, you have um, the body rig already set up and you have everything good to go um so that's that's really cool and also if you will download this project we we will already have cleaned up all the unnecessary stuff so you can just uh, plug and play with it um so once we um, exported our file for blender um, we can just drag and drop it inside of the resources window And then if you um, open up the arrow, then you will find some kind of a little structure and you have the materials in there and the meshes. And this little guy is, uh, is a prefab, but for now we only want to use um, the mesh. And so if you click on it, you can also view it in the preview right here. And um, what you what you see to the right is um, is your preview window, and um, as you can see, here we have um, like um, a, a video of a guy walking back and forth, and um, he is already tracked by the uh, the body uh, tracking tool, and um, on top of him <clears throat> we see the uh, the full body occluder. Which right now has a has a, like a debug material on it, so you can see what's happening, and then you can just click it on and off. And behind the the body um, occluder, you you see some kind of strange shapes build up, and they <laughs> consist of like very simple shapes that yeah mimic uh, a, a human body. 
and we'll later work with them a bit. These are the colliders and they will um, make sure that um, the cloth is correctly repelled from the body where, you, where we don't want to intersect it with the, uh, with the body. Um, so for now I switch this off and um, uh, what I want to uh, focus on is the this is this little component. It's it's called um, the the cloth component, and this is really um, yeah the thing we want to uh, work with today. So if you just select it, you will find inside of the inspector uh, window a lot of parameters and um, yeah little uh, input fields. So what we what we are looking for is the the input for the the mesh. And here we are, it's right in the top. Um, so once we uh, select this and we drag our mesh from the poncho inside of this little input, then voila, <laughs> everything is working correctly and uh, the poncho is um, up and running. Um, well, to be honest, uh, we've already been tweaking this a lot. Uh, mostly it's it's not that easy and you have to really go back and forth especially the vertex painting is important to get a correct results with this um, so if you go if you scroll down in the in the cloth uh, component window you see um, that there's down here uh, a, a little field that's called vertex bindings and it's gives you the color that we that Lucas just painted on top of the poncho to make sure that it's stick to the to the guide, which is the in our in our example the spine. Spine two uh, is found over here. So this is part of the yeah the whole structure, the rig that is um tracked and um if you collapse uh, uncollapse it you find inside of the, the collider guides, you will find the, the, the neck, which is also used as a, as a guide object. Um, so actually you can, you can use whatever mesh you want to have following your, your cloth object. So you could also just pin it to your hand or, or your head and uh, so, this is really nice to play with. Um, so let's see. Um, what we see here is um, actually we don't really want to have the, the back of the uh, poncho to be visible. We want to um, occlude it with the, the body mesh and we still have the wrong material on it, but you already see that it's, it sits nicely inside of the poncho. So we would need to remove the debug material <laughs> and then it's it appears in a very crazy color but then we would need to you uh, to look for an uh, occluder material and that means um let's see uh, yeah back and forth i don't think that doesn't matter actually an occluder is just makes sure that you um, like mask out um, the parts that are behind the occluder, the occluder um, mesh. Um, let's see. I... Yeah. So basically, the the occluder covers the geometry and then shows what's behind, which is the the camera. So in this case, you can see now that the 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 neck of the guy it's is showing. Not the three D, but showing what you see on the camera, which is his own his own neck, and the same happened with the hand and on the woman. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, what's interesting about the the cloth component is you can really play with the behavior of of how the cloth would simulate. You have um, in this inside of this part, you can. Uh, adjust the mass, which is like the 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 heaviness, let's say, of the of the material. If you put it to zero, then it would just 
floats float around you, which is also really cool. You can give it uh, gravity, and it's now set to a minus on the y-axis. So that means it um, would fall down if it's not uh, connected to the to the neck. Um, you could also give it a a positive value, and then actually to give it a bit of mass, it would flow up upwards and so forth. Uh, so this is really nice little um, parameters where you can uh, give your cloth um, really yeah, interesting um, yeah, behavior. <laughs> um, you can make it stiffer or a bit more floppy. So yeah, I advise you to just play around with it. It's really fun. Um, and then we have some more stuff below that's um, interesting to know. Let's just give it a bit more mass. So um, down here, you see that there are um, colliders um, listed. And um, that means what I just uh, referred to in the beginning is you have um, shapes that um, yeah, avoid the, the cloth from going through your arm or your, or your body. Uh, you can um, assign them to, um, to this cloth. And um, yeah, like, so if, if you would raise your arm, the, the cloth would also come up because it would collide on the, on your arm and it would, yeah, be, um, uh, yeah, just uh, lifted up through your arm. So it mimics really in a really nice way how you, how real life cloth would uh, actually behave <laughs> on your body. Yeah, I think uh, that's it so far. If you have any questions. Very nice. Um, maybe you can show just one detail. Uh, the If you add the debug material to the poncho, then you can see uh, where are the... No, uh, when you apply the... So if on the dress, instead of having this dress material, you can search for the debug material. Oh, OK. And then you can see where the vertex paint is at. There you go. So then, That's if cool. you see yeah. now, you can you can see the, the 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 color red that I painted earlier. So then you're better able to tell with this debug where uh, what is being connected to what. And if you want to dive like really into more complex examples, you can put like different kinds of pins where like the red will go to one hand and the blue to another one, and like that. I don't know. You could have like uh, all sorts of like uh, interesting effects, right? You can have a maybe a was there an example as well where you can have like a, a a fabric that you can hold with both hands, right? Like the blue will attach to one hand, the red, something like that. Yeah, so that kind of yep. stuff. Are there any more questions? Otherwise, I can I can still show you one more thing on the the shader part. I have a quick question uh, about the colliders. Can you um, maybe show a little bit of how the, the colliders work, just briefly? Yeah, well, they are, like I said uh, in the beginning, they are connected to the rig, which is uh, drawn on top of your body. And um, right now, I, I made the colliders visible, so you can actually see uh, how, how they are aligned with your body and everywhere where you see these shapes, the cloth would fall on top of it and would rest on top of it. So that's how they work. It's like a, yeah, like a volume that's, that is not intersectable for the cloth. So would you need to um, adjust the colliders for like the body shape? per person or does that translate or or do you just pick um, uh, a standard person? Well, um, yeah, actually, you really have to try out always how it's uh, how it translates into real life. So it looks different in, in that studio than on your phone. So 
yeah, you have to go a lot of, yeah, you have to do a lot of inter iterations to make, to make your, your um, clothing look correct. So yeah, I, actually you, you, you should really, yeah, go into de detail and, and fine tune where you need to fine tune it, but it's very, yeah, it, it's a, it, from case to case, it, it's very different what you what your needs are You're welcome yeah i think so Lucas can take over yeah i can share my uh oops i forgot to there you go share my screen but to add to that um what sara was saying uh yeah so there i'm, I'm sharing my my screen now um but to add to what Sarah was saying the um oh wait, yes there the mostly this the, the the collider will follow the especially the body mesh will try and follow the person's body size taller uh, larger smaller etc uh it's not absolutely perfect because all this is happening in real time on your phone but it does have a, pre a pretty good approximation. Uh, the one thing that the colliders sometimes might be that they're not big enough or like, yeah, exactly what Sarah was saying, that you have to try them out because extremes sometimes are not possible. And the other thing that I wanted to show you guys uh, is that, and this is just more like an, like an extra bonus. Uh, it's not on the Notion page, but it will be here on the recording. Because uh, this one is a very simple dress, uh, just a sorry, it's a very simple poncho. And I wanted to make it look a bit more uh, special. And I wanted to show you as well the power of using the shaders in, um, in, in Lens Studio. Because the cool thing about uh, using this real time is that you have the shader, which is pretty much what we have been using in gaming for decades. Uh, and the cool thing is that now you can have them in real time, add different cool effects and create different cool part patterns. So in this case, what I did here was that I went to materials and I go to add a plus and then create a new material. In my case, I did a simple PVR and then go to the dress where like right under where you added the mesh, you have the material. So this is the same that I just created now. Well, it's the, I'm, uh, I named it there Lovecraft shader. So I apply this here. And at the very beginning, it will just show up like this in white. And when you double click on it, it will open the material shader editor. You can see up here that it has the name of the editor that I'm, the material that I'm editing. And it will open this world of notes and things that you can play with. Now, this is very similar to the stuff that you have in Blender, for example. If you go down here to the shader editor, uh, you end up having notes. So this kind of tells you that learning notes in 2023, it's a good idea because it's happening like pretty much everywhere that everything is becoming node based because it, they're easy to learn. You don't need to know code. You just attach things. You just know how to attach different things. But in this case, the shaders in the, um, in here, the materials are more or less the same. You have the basic values, which is, which are base color, which is diffuse, specular, the metallic uh, reflections, the emission in some cases and normal maps. So you might have heard of this subject, but this is mostly to show you the, what is possible. In my case, what I want to do is I want to have what I showed earlier on the Notion page. I want to have this uh, Lovecraft Hearts, the, our logo. And if you can see it, they're slowly moving. So they're not just static on the poncho. They are like sliding and offsetting to, to one side. And I want to show you how to do that. Uh, I imported earlier here the, uh, the textures of the the little logo, which is this one. And it's in black and white in this case. So I'll show you in a bit also how to make it in colors. To add a texture to this shader, first thing I do is I go right click and add, and then I go to texture and apply a texture to the parameter, parameter or parameter. And when I do that, 
I already have one here, this one. Then I can go to the properties and I can say that this would be the like no main main texture. When I do that, then basically what I'm saying is that any texture that I apply to this, it's what I'm going to use later on the nodes. Then I can go to my dress, uh, sorry, to the material here, and you can see here I have the base color, which is this node here. I have the base texture, which is this one. Is it? No. I did something wrong then. Am I using the correct uh, shader? Uh-oh, Sarah, help me. What did I do wrong? For some reason, it's not showing the, the one that I wanted. Base texture. Cool, this, we're live, huh? Please remember that. Can Sarah, you, you're on mute. Can you please double click on the Lovecraft shader? Uh, left, no, left. Um, yeah, like in the tab that's in the material editor. Double click on that tab. Yeah, yeah. On no, where you were. <laughs> Double click on. It. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. Huh. That's a bug of Lens Land Studio. Oh, and, um, fun. Yeah. Uh, any name? If I change it. Oh, cool. Well, look, I have it here anyway, and this one is showing. So let's just use that. Cool. I found a bug. Fun. Yeah, in the uh, middle of the uh, okay oh i know what's happening i'm dumb sorry that's my bad the only way that these nodes will show it's because you need to apply it to something to the final to the exit of the of the node let's say so in my case i do here this is how oh, it yeah, showed up when okay. i did it the very beginning so I, as soon as i drag and drop it you will see that Here's the 2D parameter. It will show up like this, and I can connect it to Albedo, which is the, 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 the color of the material. But what's happening now is that I'm seeing the, the heart in black and white, and it's just one giant one in on the poncho. So what I want to do is to make more of them. To do that, then I go to, I'll just go ahead and make this again, right click. And I do scale the chords. This is basically scaling the coordinates on the on the mesh to be to, to make the the guy smaller. And I need to change this to custom. And then I can apply brand new coordinates. Now the other thing that I need to add here is to get surface score. Sorry if I'm going too fast. Uh, it's just that I. You, I'm showing you now the notes, and like I mentioned, you can go and dive deeper in how all this works. All right, we have a crazy new dude now. Yeah, there you go. Now it's fitting correctly. And what I want to tell it is that instead of having one and one heart, I want I can now change here and tell it to do 10 by 10 hearts. Cool. So now this one is a static version. It's just a heart that are fix on the place. Um, but if I want to have them to start moving, then I can do add nodes and offset chords. And I can tell it now that I want my chords the, um, in between these two. So this, the, the chords that were scaled, now they will also start moving. So nothing happens when I have, because now if we check here, it's in zero and zero. This, these values, we, what we want is that they go from, keep on going up so that as, as I keep on moving them, they, they, the hearts will start moving out of place. In order to do that, I can use the fact that we're doing this in real time. And then I can add here a lapse timeline, a lapse time at the offset and boom, we have a moving hearts going downwards. And I don't like the fact that this is black and white, but that's again the beauty of like uh, adding, having this in real time, I can edit it here. So to do that, I can add a node, it's a mix. And this what's gonna do, if I have it selected, I can tell it here that I want everything to be RGB so that I can use colors. What this is saying is that this 
texture, which is black and white. I can put it in this node. And now I'm telling it that this is the color that you will put on the black, and this is the color that you will put on the white, right? Yes. So then I can make this black part. I'm going to make it purple. And then this white part, I'm going to make it our shiny pink color. There you go. Again, this is something that I'm, I'm mostly showing you, and I'm going really fast, but it's, it's to show you what's possible in this. Uh, that's what this whole conversation is about, is to show you that by getting a little bit of Blender, a little bit of Lens Studio, you can get to make this really cool and interesting shaders and uh, AR filters. So um, yeah, I think that's, that's about all the information we can give you in this short uh, time. That's the thing. Now probably, Anatari, it's a good time to share the, the link to the Notion page where people can see this. And there you go. Perfect. There's secure code. Well, and uh, if there are any questions, any other extras, we're open here to, to, to keep on talking. So um, I guess my question would be, so now you have the poncho, and how do you test it out? <sighs> Yes, that's a good question. That's a really good question. So the best way to do it is you can go up here to on the top right corner. When you click on uh, pre preview on device, it will give you a Snapchat code. You can scan that and it, uh, you will have to sync your Snapchat account with Lens Studio. And then you'll be able to try it as a on a with a test preview that which is all only for you. But then you can also then later once this is done, you can put it on my lenses, and then you can even make it public so that other people can try it. So that's that's also not too difficult to do. Thank you. Yeah. Kay, are there questions in the chat? Um, none at the moment. Just more on, this is absolutely amazing. More comments, actually. So this is absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for sharing this. Um, will it be recorded? And so that was from, uh, uh, sorry, it was from Navin over on YouTube. So yeah, um, if everyone can scan the QR code, it's up in the top left corner. So yeah, thank you so much for this. And maybe we can share our socials if anybody needs to connect with us. Uh, uh... Uh, you can always DM me uh, or Sara, and we're happy to 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 um, tell you more about. Uh, and if you have any questions, the other thing I wanted to show it's uh, our. I forgot what I put. Yeah, a little bit of our community. We are a part of Lovecraft. You can visit our site, lovecraft.io, or you can also join us on Instagram, same lovecraft.io, or here on LinkedIn. And we are a community of developers and creatives. Um, and we are working on all kinds of uh, this digital web free and digital crafting, uh, which uh, with, we have our own special space where we meet every Tuesday. Uh, right now, we're taking a little bit of a break, and we're going to start again in August. But we have been working on NFTs and AR filters, as you can see, games, uh, real-time um, uh, in real-life installations. And we have made a couple of mobile games as well. So yeah, we're always open to, to gather. And besides being a studio agency, we have our own community. And we like to talk about the things that we're building, all the latest in news, and we have a strong focus on creation, on really gathering, putting our minds together, building something, keeping each other updated, and, and sharing what is it that, that we're building. So please feel free to join us if you'd like to learn more. So yeah, there we go. Yeah. Thank you guys so much. Yes, um, I have learned so much from being uh, in the community and coming to the Tuesday events uh, so you guys will get a lot out of it if you join um nice. i guess that that's it i i do have one last question 
just about the body coming out of the uh, the poncho right now. Is that just yeah. again playing around with the colliders? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So what I think it's happening here, uh, what I was, you're still, yeah, you still see my screen. Um, oh yeah, another thing I forgot is that on this shader, it should be set to double sided. Now, now you can see the inside and the outside of the. Uh, but what I saw, this is mostly about testing because here on the spine for example this collider you see when that when i click on it this part gets a little bit light blue that's because i have this collided selected and yeah it's 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 a bit of testing between the viewport and what you see here on the real time thing you can uh go to the radius and then try and make it a little bit bigger you can see that now he gets a bit of a, a bulge on him and then I can also go to this one which I think is very very small yeah it's not even covering the the full body of the guy I can select it and then start moving it and yeah so then I can make sure that it bounces a little less also it, it it's a little bit different when you try it on your phone I feel like the the simulation is better because right now it's it's, it's a whole software running on your PC and trying to use your GPU and the CPU, what I have the recording on and blah, blah, blah. But if, when you try it on your phone, it's a dedicated simulation. So it might look yeah. a little bit better. And yeah, it's, it's just a thing of like Interesting. testing and trying. Yeah. Cool. OK, that's great. Nice. Uh, yeah, I, I think uh, we're, we're coming to an end. If anyone has any last minute questions. I see a question comment. that says, where did you get the body from? And on the Notion page, on the QR code, you will see this one is the Lens Studio Body Mesh Try-On. Uh, that, just download that FBX, you import it to Blender, and this is where you can start modeling. This is the, the guy, this is what you use for, for reference. And then in Lens Studio, you get started with the, um, you can either, use the the template for body uh what's the name again cloth try on body mesh try on and then uh you or you can download just our lens project which is here that's amazing thank you guys so much for this session i think uh i'm gonna start playing as soon as we get off so thank you and nice. uh, with that, Kay, are there any last minute uh, comments, questions? No, yeah, it was just that last one about the body form. I think ju just to add quickly to what you mentioned, Lucas, a lot of people sort of have a tendency of changing the size of that, uh, sort of like the proportions of that avatars, but avoid doing that. So it's a, sort of like a newbie, I think. <laughs> issue that everyone sort of goes through so yeah just adding that quickly but apart from that yeah everyone is thanking you so much thank you so much lucas and sarah this is absolutely amazing i've also played around a little bit with um lens studio but i will definitely be trying this out myself and giving it a go so thank you so much nice well thank, thank you guys thank you everybody thank, thank you. you thank you for joining and uh yeah, you'll get the the recording up soon. I think as soon as we log off, the recording will be there. So if you wanna, if you missed anything or want to slow things down, pause. You can do that. And thanks again. Have a great Perfect. rest of your week. Happy weekend. And we'll thank be you soon. guys. Okay. Thank, thank you so you. much. We thank stay in touch. You. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye.